So the first thing I wanted to show you is uh, regarding our exam on Monday, I wanted to show you the equation sheet that I'm going to be printing and providing for you. Just in case you want to get an advanced glimpse of what it looks like, it's posted on our uh, course website for uh, Engineering 221. So if you go to the bottom of the list of those things, you'll find the equation sheet. And uh, so you're actually going to get some preview for the exam, it's going to at least, you know, one of the questions will be related to 4%, 8%, or 10%. So that's like some big information. I don't know what you're going to do with that in advance, but knowing the interest rates, because those are the tables I'm going to provide. So you'll have uh, at least one question where I'm asking you to use the factor lookup method. Um, and then here are the equations that I provided to you on a separate printout earlier. So at least one of the questions on the exam, I'll ask you to use the equation method. So you'll need to know both approaches. But um, you know that's all you'll get as far as the formulas uh, printed off separately. Um, sometimes I build an equation like into the problem statement itself, if it's something a little more obscure that I think you're definitely going to need. Um, the exam will be uh, 50 minutes in duration on Monday. And um, I'm not exactly sure how many questions it's going to be. I haven't assembled it yet and printed it, but I'll be doing that this afternoon. So any questions related to the announcements? If you didn't already pick up your graded homework assignment, the grader gave me uh, number four just this morning. So you can pick that up. It looks like here's all the... Uh, incoming assignments. Any more of these? Number six, homework six? All right. Please be sure to staple your papers together before you turn it in. Otherwise, it's hard to uh, sort of keep track of things. You might lose pages in the assignment if it's not stapled together. Today, we're going to be talking about annual worth analysis, which is just another way of making decisions and comparing alternatives. You'll remember that so far, we've done future worth analysis. Before that, we did present worth analysis. Now, one thing I didn't tell you yet is that when you analyze two compare, when you compare two alternatives by either one of those methods, you'll always get the same answer in terms of which one is best. So it's not like you do the future worth analysis and option A would look better, and then you do the present worth analysis and suddenly option B looks better. Thankfully, you won't face that problem. Um, regardless of which approach you take, including this new annual worth analysis, um, you'll get the same option being the most attractive. It's just sometimes we want to know the answer in terms of money today, money in some future date, or in case of this annual worth analysis, we're finding out what's the equivalent annual expense or revenue for some alternative. So here's a cash flow diagram, and it seems from this cash flow diagram that this is a cost option that's not generating any revenue. This is something where we have to maybe in year zero pay a lot of money for the equipment. And then in year one, this five, these are millions, so eight million dollars to buy the equipment. Five million dollars maybe to train people on it, to continue getting it installed and situated. And then the ongoing annual and maintenance, maintenance expect expenses are $0.9 million each year. And those are at the end of each year. And so you'll see here at year one, you're paying the expenses of having operated and maintained the equipment from time zero through the entire first year until one. And so this terminal year, at year eight, you get the uh, expense costs, this $0.9 million for having operated it during the previous year, and then there's a salvage value of 0.5 million at the end. So what we're going to be doing today in class is converting a cash flow diagram like this into a cash flow diagram that only has annual amounts. And you'll notice that this does not include an amount in year zero. So in annual worth analysis, you move everything through you, the end of the first year through the end of the cash flow diagram, but there's no present value in annual worth analysis. So essentially, you're, what you're doing is you're saying, I can buy the equipment, and this is what the cash flow diagram looks like, but what if I just paid for it on an, an, on an annual basis, maybe through leasing or through paying a contractor to do all the things associated with this first cash flow diagram? 
And this approach can be used to compare alternatives with different useful lives. So who can remember, just by way of review, since we have an exam on Monday, what are some of the ways that we can handle cash flow diagrams of different useful lives? We've talked about three so far. Least common multiple, good. Contract services, what's the third? Early termination, great. So least common multiple, what we do is we repeat the cash flow diagrams until they end at the same time. Early termination is we take the equipment that lasts longer and we sell it early and get a larger salvage value. And then contract services, you uh, rent the equipment item for the one that's going to last uh, the lesser of the two useful lives. So we can use this approach and not have to go through the trouble of those. If you find out the annual equivalent, equivalent of two alternatives, then you don't have to manually repeat them, or you don't have to early terminate. But there are some assumptions built in already. So this uh, annual worth analysis has a nice advantage. The advantage is that you only have to do one life cycle, and you don't have to repeat and uh, potentially make the mistake of when you're buying the item again, putting it in the correct year. And uh, that was one mistake that a lot of people made is, for example, if the item goes through six years, then buying the item again for the second repeat of the cash cycle in year seven, you, know, you have to buy it at the end of the useful life so that it's ready through the entirety of the next year. So I think you maybe remember that mistake if you made it. But this, you don't have to worry about repeating the cash flow diagram. It's sort of assumed. It's built into the uh, assumption of annual worth analysis. So each of these three points here, first of all, when you do an annual worth analysis, when you're comparing two alternatives, what this approach assumes is that you're going to need the equipment of both alternatives for as long as they last. So if you're comparing one uh, item that will last for two years and another that will last for three, and you're comparing them on the basis of annual worth analysis, what you're sort of saying to yourself without actually showing it on the cash flow diagram, without showing it on your calculations, you're assuming that what you'd really be doing is you'd be repeating the two-year item three times and terminating at six, and repeating the three-year item twice and ending at year six. Even though you wouldn't actually show that in the cash flow diagram, by comparing two alternatives by the annual worth analysis, that's what you're assuming. So, selective alternative will be repeated, um, and then the cash flows will be the same. And when we actually did the LCM manually, I told you that that's one of the tricky things, is assuming that some years in the future you can buy the item again for the same price. And maybe it's valid for some things, like computers, where you'll always be able to find a desktop computer that's pretty good for 500 bucks. Uh, but you may not always be able to buy a backhoe for 78000 in the future that you can buy today. This an annual worth analysis, when you're comparing alternatives with different useful lives, you can't make any correction to that because built into the assumption is that you are repeating the cash flows. So when we do a uh, conversion into annual worth, one of the components of a typical cash flow is already an annual worth. And we have to move the other two components to annual worth. So let's go back to this cash flow diagram. The cash flow diagram on the left is our original sort of real world inflow and outflow experience. We purchase the item, install it, operate it, and then sell it. So the operation costs the uh, maintenance and operation is already an annual worth. So we don't have to do anything to the 0.9 million. But we are going to have to move the present value amount and spread it out over A. And we've got two future amounts that have to be spread out over A. You'll notice that the 0.5 will be easy to do. We could do an A slash F on the 0.5 but what will the approach have to be for the five million that's in year one? Go ahead. That's right. Exactly. So it's going to be a two-step process. This five million should be moved to zero and then taken from the present, your zero, and spread out over the entire eight-year lifespan. Um, or 
if for whatever reason we wanted to, we could move it to year eight, combine it with the amount at year eight, and then spread that out over the annual series. I don't know why it seems more awkward to do it that way, but we could do it. We could do a uh, F slash P with N equals seven to get that five million from year one to year eight combined with the point five million and then spread out over A. So the initial investment, salvage value, both of those should be converted into an A. And that's what the bottom half of this slide is summarizing. It's saying that annual worth is the present worth amount multiplied by the ratio A to P. Find annual worth given some present value for an interest rate and a known N. And then anything that is a future worth, you multiply by the ratio A slash F. And you can get those factors from the table or use the equations to calculate your own factor, your own ratio of A to F and vice versa. Okay. One other piece of terminology is the phrase capital recovery. Capital recovery means if you buy an item, how much do you have to pay each year to cover the cost of that item? So it's sort of like you're annualizing the initial capital cost of equipment coupled with its salvage value at the end of life. So take, for instance, a Toyota that you buy for $24,000. You're going to keep it for eight years, and then you're going to sell it for $5,000 at the end of those eight years. What you would do to find the capital recovery, which is the annual, not the maintenance and operation. Capital recovery isn't that. The capital recovery is just how much you have to collect each year to cover the initial purchase price minus the salvage value. So here's the P is the present value, the initial purchase price you're turning into an A. And then here's the salvage value. And make note of the sign. Here, P is negative and S is positive. Because when you are uh, um, thinking about it in terms of the expense, which is an initial outlay, then the, uh, the capital recovery is going to be the opposite of that. It's going to be the revenue you need to cover the initial outflow. So we'll come back to capital recovery in several of the in-class exercises, but just to keep in your mind, it's not the operation maintenance, it's not the fuel, it's not repairs. It's just taking into account the purchase price and the salvage value. Here is the in-class exercise that we're going to be working through today. It's that same cash flow diagram that we were looking at earlier. In the first part of the uh, problem, I'd, la I'd like you to outline your solution strategy, you know, step one, step two, and so on. And then in part B, uh, find the annual worth based on 8% interest. And that interest rate is on the back of the page. Now, I think that most people will finish this early today, so the remainder of the time you can either uh, pack up and go if you've got other places to be, want to start your weekend early, or if you want to ask me questions uh, related to getting ready to review for the exam, I'm happy to uh, help you out on anything so far that still is uh, needing clarification.
Yeah. Thanks. Excel is definitely not the simple way to solve this one. I mean, you can with the uh, payment function, but it's maybe easier just to uh, do this one on paper, actually.